program features live coverage of an African safari and may include animal kills and carcasses. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome everyone to a wonderful afternoon out in the African bush. We are looking at a gorgeous herd of zebra and this is Safari Live. The gorgeous herd of zebra are just busy feeding. Maybe they've gone all the way down to Huyatala Dam and now they're heading back onto the safety of quarantine, which is a big open area where I'm sure they're going to be enjoying a bit of food. Now they've all been following each other and just once the leader decided to start going and moving, well, the rest of them had follow suit. And I think we are out of zebras in this open area because they're all going in that direction. Good to see you, good to start a show with you. We were looking for you guys this morning, but you were nowhere to be found, were you? I'm sure you were hiding in the bushes just looking at us, and it seems like almost towards the end there is the runt one coming all the way over there. My name is Ali, and on camera with me today I've got Sam, and we are very happy to take you guys upon this adventure all the way from Juma Game Reserve in South Africa. Now this is a live and interactive show, so if you've got any comments or any questions, please feel free to send them through using the hashtag Safari Live. Now, it seems like for today, our friends in the Mara will not be joining us. They have been working really hard, pulling all-nighters, working from pretty much 6 o'clock in the evening until 8 o'clock in the morning, following lions and getting used to their hunting habits. So they are working very, very hard to try and bring you the best possible show in the upcoming Nat Geo series. So they have earned a much-deserved rest. So unfortunately, they won't be joining, joining me and Taylor this afternoon, but I'm sure we, Taylor and I are going to try our best to keep us as entertaining as possible. So we had a very incredible morning today and it seems like Taylor has managed to find one more surprise out here in the bush so let's go over to her so we can meet some new friends we've got many new friends that need introduction today we finally found the den that the hyenas have been using it and that explains a whole lot as to what actually has been going on out here on Safari. Look at me, my sunglasses are still on my head but they're off now. Now welcome of course again. My name is Taylor and on camera with me today is Gert and he's very excited. He even says that these hyenas are extremely adorable and our hashtag Safari Live with all of your questions. Like I said, we're not going to stay very long. You can see this, the older cub just here in front of us. And the reason why I can't stay, I just want to reiterate, is because there aren't any adults here. So, theoretically, I shouldn't be here, but I can't move now as well because this cub is right by my car. So, as soon as it moves back towards the youngster that's up on the termite mound, we are going to make a little dash for it. But we'll keep coming and popping past here this afternoon and hope that one of the adults do join these youngsters. You can see that they look a bit bored, to be honest. They're curious, they heard my car and they came running out. So it's not as though they're frightened of us. But, again, they're young, there's no one here to protect them. So if a leopard or something like that came through here, uh, we, we wouldn't want to be around. We'd rather just have them here on their own. But let's have a quick look at that little one as well. Now this is a new cub. This is a teeny tiny tot. Like I said, it's only a few weeks old. It's hard to say because we, well, we don't know when it was born and you know it could have been around for quite some time but we were seeing lots of little hyena footprints at one point so I would say I mean you can just start to see some of the spots I'm going to put it at about three weeks three or four weeks old so it's not a teeny tiny brand new baby and this other one okay oh, <laughs> these the go-away bird gave this hyena in front a fright there's a go-away bird that's just sat up on the branch and it actually ducked when it came and landed in. I'm gonna, I don't know how old this one, it's hard to say. It's, it's not particularly big. I'm gonna say around th just over three months maybe. There's the go away bird now shouting. At, uh, over here. So you can see even the birds will alarm 
at hyenas. <laughs> Justin, you say that it is so fluffy, it is absolutely adorable. Oh my goodness, it's coming now, it's coming to my feet. There's my foot. There, you can see my foot. And my leg, I'm just ducking out of your way. Here's the little hyena. So that you can have a look at it. So it just shows you straight off the bat, and I don't know how much interaction this hyena has had with cars. Like I said, it could be one of the youngsters that we were seeing. Um, maybe not. Maybe it's even one of the newer ones. One of the ones, the little one that Jamie or who, I think it was Jamie or James. No, it wasn't James. James wasn't, hadn't seen. I actually can't remember. I remember when I was on holiday once, there was a tiny new cub. I think it could have been Jamie. She's the hyena queen that was out. So that could be this one that we're seeing. It was Jamie, yes, I think so too, Megan. So I think that little one that we weren't sure of who, who was who, that could maybe be this one now. Yeah. Yes, okay. I'm going to make my opportunity now. I'm back out of the sighting. I'm so sorry. I know you all want me to stay here for as long as possible, and I'd absolutely love to stay here, but I just cannot. Bye, guys. Be safe. Right. We're going to reverse out. We're going to let these two naughty hyenas relax and hopefully mom will make a return a bit later so I'm going to send you back across to Ali because I need to do a bit of bundu bashing how amazing I am so happy we finally figured out where the hyenas have been staying because now we're gonna be able to keep up with them again now we've got a beautiful stallion right next to us and he hasn't really moved and he I think he might be either falling asleep or checking us out but it gives us an opportunity to just look at those beautiful stripes did I jinx you now I think I might have oh no some beautiful close-up of the stripes and we could see the eye and he was pretty much standing still all the way here but I think now that the other male has moved off maybe this one's decided that it didn't want to be all by itself and then has carried on moving. You could have posed so beautifully for us. Very beautiful creature, are you not? I was just saying, I find zebras such pleasant creatures to look at. The the dazzle and their stripes and the combination when they're all, all together. I think it's always I don't know if it's almost like a kaleidoscope that every time there will be new shapes forming up and down. I just find it incredibly fascinating. I mean, just look at all the games that Seb is doing. He's getting very artsy looking at all those stripes. Just pretty much imagine all the photos we could be taking of all of them. It's wonderful. Now, it seems like we've had a bit of a return of zebra and lots of wildebeest around as well. So, I'm wondering if the lions perhaps are going to make a return because yesterday they avoided pretty much all of quarantine where all of the zebras must have been sleeping and they went onto Arethusa and they left us behind so I wonder if maybe now that the zebras are here and there are more spray species around if they'll be able to pick it up and maybe come back to us later on we've got more Joshua you're wondering if this one looks pregnant well this one is a male so it's definitely not pregnant but you see the problem with uh, zebras is that because of their digestive processes they go through they have to ferment their food within their stomachs which causes a lot of gas to be able to break down the food that they're eating and then absorb the nutrients from it so it seems always seems like they're fat but sometimes they're not just really fat they're just bloated all right it seems like our zebras are migrating all the way back to quarantine maybe they have heard that the zebras in the Mara and the wildebeest have started moving and they want to do it too so I'm going to try and move a little bit around hopefully the brakes won't give in <laughs> and we'll be able to see a little bit more of them I think they are all slowly but surely moving back into the open area which is wonderful so I really want to see as many of them as possible today there's a nice jump there. Stay guys, don't go. We are almost there, just around the corner of this termite mound. It's funny, now I close my eyes and I see shadow on top of every single termite mound. <laughs> Alright, there we've got 
the clouds that are probably being brought by all this wind that we've had. Now apparently there's a bit of rain predicted for tomorrow. I really, really do hope that this is one of those occasions where the weather channel gets it completely wrong because being very cold and wet is not ideal. I do know though that that is how most people live winter and that we are very spoiled here to have this precious sunshine during a winter afternoon. Hmm. Well, you guys carrying on into quarantine. Well, we're not too far. No need to rush. Lori, you're wondering why the zebras bob their head like this. Well, I'm not too sure. At one point I thought that they were picking up the scent of each other because they weren't doing it too much, but I think now it's almost as a sign of disdain to this stallion that's lagging behind them. So I think maybe there's a bit of animosity in between them. I don't think this particular one that we're looking at, maybe, or maybe the other one is still ahead now. I've gotten confused between them. Ah! Now, oh, look at the stripes underneath her belly. I hope somebody got a shot of that. <laughs> that is wonderful. So yes, like, I'm, like I was saying, I think they're just, they either got something in their noses that was making it itchy by the way that they were walking, but I think now it's just to try and prove a point. Because they don't normally walk this way. I think maybe there are two stranger stallions that are slowly following a herd of females and another male. I wonder, let's see, has they all been acting funny? And they keep doing the Fleming Grimace, so, hmm. Let's see, guys, let's see what you're up to. Beautiful. We didn't even have to go far to have a look at them. We are pretty much in our backyard, which is called Quarantine, which is this beautiful open area, not too far from where we stay as staff members. And where the lodge is, actually. It's also behind the lodge. There's a confused Impala who doesn't want to be part of the activity. And then we've got the last one coming to join. What are you guys up to? Very mm. determined pace that they're going to. I wonder if perhaps they're not going to go hide just on the other end of quarantine, which seems to be a bit of a thicker area. But let me just try going around here. Hopefully we'll be able to get another view of them on this other road. So I think this is turning to be a very beautiful afternoon, very beautiful setting with all the zebras walking in a single file, the clouds behind them. Can't complain. <laughs> Amy, you're wondering why the zebra was rolling in the grass like that. Sorry, I thought I should explain it, but clearly um, my head is not where it's supposed to be. Very screwed on into my head, uh, well, the rest of my body. So they do it, they does bathe often to try and get rid of some of the parasites that get into their skin. And by parasites, it can be anything like fleas, mites, and even some ticks. So by putting on some sand on top of it, they just sometimes help dislodge these parasites and they fall onto the ground. So you'll find that zebras do it often, as well as wildebeest and some other creatures. So it's a, the equivalent of, a, of an elephant going into the mud and using it to get rid of the ticks, and the zebras use just the dry, the dry soil or the loose soil. Very steadily walking. I think we actually have a stallion there, or a male that's following the rest of them. Curious one, you're saying that the grass is very dry. It is, it is indeed. It's very yellow. I think this area maybe looks a bit worse because it's an open area so the grass is not normally too long and it's quite open so lots of animals come and feed on, on this particular area that we're in. But in general, yes, everything's looking very uh, dry and I think just in the few weeks 
it's it's felt more like winter and the way that winter looks all the time towards the the end of it I think this male is doing a display potentially to try and sway one of the females away I don't think you're gonna get away with it nobody's too interested Vishan, you're wondering why it's called quarantine. Well, quarantine is an area where they normally put big enclosures so that when they're re-releasing animals back into the wild, you've got to give them a little bit of time to adapt, make sure, make sure that they become slightly aware of their surroundings, the smells that they are around here, and also just to make sure that they are not carrying any potential diseases from the area where they were initially transferred from. So I would imagine it's called quarantine because that's what this area used to be used used for in, in previously in terms of animal reintroduction. <laughs> Very impressive, isn't he? All right, are you going to come in front of us or are you stopping there? I think maybe what could have happened, let's see, before I start making theories, I want to have a look at this other two that are playing like that. <laughs> Very funny, they are looking not that comfortable. It is quite windy here, so I would have assumed that they would have stayed down there where they were earlier on instead of coming all the way out here into the open. Although coming into the open, besides the fact that perhaps it might make them a bit colder and they'll have to spend a little bit more energy uh, trying to produce the body hood or might maintain a certain body temperature, it's also good for them because they'll be able to see further away in the distance and just try to be have a bit of an edge in case any predator tries to come and sneak up on them you see it would be very very hard in this particular area for lions or leopards to come too close to the zebra which would allow them to spot them at a safe distance and pretty much make their move for them because yes lions uh, are or can be very quick but they also need to get very close to their potential prey before they 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 try and pounce on them because they can only sustain that speed for a certain while and also of course the zebras are still very fast so it's not easy for them to catch them. Now let me try and go slightly forward see if perhaps we can have a last look at this zebras. No brakes! Don't leave me! Still struggling a bit from the brakes from this morning but I think we shall be fine. We can always brake using our gears can't we? <laughs> it's gonna be interesting. Right. I think maybe you guys want to go towards the Impala, don't you? I'm very happy. All right. Now we've got all of them here. So I count in total one, two, three, four, five, six zebras all together. John, you're wondering why the grass is so short on quarantine and if it's the it's, uh, grazers safe he he heaven, <laughs> haven, <laughs> now I can do this. Um, yes, so I think when you see very big open areas like this one, initially they have to be maintained because the area where we're in, this is mostly what it's defined as savanna woodland. So it's not those big open areas, the grassland that we're seeing when we do go across to the Mara where it's just endless rolling plains. Here it's, there are a lot more trees around and um, 
it can get a bit thicker so a lot of the times these areas that we're looking at that are very nice and open don't naturally occur there's got to be a bit of bush clearing just to be able to maintain them in this particular condition now when we start doing that and because they are nice and open a lot of creatures will come and will move into this area because well number one it allows them to see further away but of course as they start spending more time here then they start depleting the resources in a specific area now zebras and wildebeest for example are very well known for preferring shorter grasses so this is pretty much their their haven as you were saying so we will often see them eating around here and just pretty much finishing up all the brand new shoots that are starting to grow from the from the ground although i don't think there's too much growing around here i think everything's just pretty dry and then the zebra will feed at, at some level and then we will see the wildebeest that will come and will feed just of whatever it is that the zebra didn't feed on so lots of pressure in this area in terms of grazing so that's why sometimes it doesn't look like there is too much grass around here they do love it and they will come and eat around here often huh, somebody's having a stump maybe there was a bit of a fly there <laughs> beautiful I must say the zebra is still look in quite good condition to me if we just look at them and obviously not by looking at their stomachs that we were discussing earlier that become quite bloated because of the fermentation process that they go through when they're trying to digest but if we look at their manes they're all standing pretty upright and doing just well I always think of a piano when I see a zebra's mane <laughs> everything's going just fine along there and just in general they still they don't look too particularly skinny around the lower part of their abdomen I think you guys are still doing good maybe perhaps they manage to eat a lot and be very happy during the summertime gas from Kansas you're wondering if zebras can be domesticated well up to an extent they can um, they are however apparently not the greatest pets they tend to be quite wild in their behavior and they kick and bite often so I have heard of many people that have had pet zebras but I don't think that they become as tame as for example a horse would and you can't really mount them either because you'll end up breaking their backs or well maybe not breaking but damaging their backs as they have their backs are not as strong as the ones of a horse so in terms for human use um, zebras are not normally used exquisite bliss you're wondering why their legs are shaking well sometimes that shake happens when there's a little fly that lands on the leg so it's just a, an involuntary muscle contraction to try and, and shoo the the fly or the tick away much like what happens for example I don't know if you've ever seen horses when they get them around and it's almost like their their body knows what to do that movement might just scare all those flies away and you see that beautiful tail that they've got the most important function that the tail has is just to sweat all the flies and the annoying little things that fly around them away from them there's a beautiful tail <laughs> mm, wonderful now where did well, they're all still around here roughly on quarantine now we have seen them when it is in the mornings when it's very very cold we have seen them go off to uh, thicker areas just to try and keep a little bit warmer rather than coming into these nice big open areas where it would be a bit cooler so it'll be interesting maybe to follow up tomorrow and see where they've actually where they will be during the morning now there's a little trick there to identify or to be able to sex the zebras when we look at them from behind and so if you look at the one on the right you will see that there's pretty much no black stripe in between the its two cheeks okay well now you're not helping me because you moved around but normally if there's no very visible black stripe then that's a good indication that we're looking at a male and if there is a very thick black line in between them then you will be able to see it properly 
Now, obviously they didn't move, but if you look at this one over here, I'm gonna go for male as well because we can't really see any black line. It's very, very obvious for the females. So two youngsters here, or two males. Seems like Taylor's enjoying the off-roading today. <laughs> so I think it's her turn this afternoon. So let's go over to her and see where she's headed. We're coming to try and find Mvula again. Maybe we'll get lucky for a third time. So I went to uh, the spot where we had him uh, this morning after game drive. We actually came back out uh, to see what he was getting up to. And I have an interesting story to tell you. So, can you believe it? 10 minutes after Taxon and I left the sighting, so basically just after uh, the end of drive, he stayed for another five minutes and then we moved out. There was another guide, Harley, he was coming into the sighting. But we didn't really want to wait and we knew he wasn't going anyway, so we thought it'd be quite easy for him to relocate. So he did, he arrived in the sighting and 10 minutes after being there, Mvula leapt down the burrow because there was a big warthog that was trying to come out of it and he tried to grab it and then it ended up being Mvula, zero, warthog one. Can you believe it that that warthog actually took him on and managed to shake him off and he raced straight back down uh, into underneath the ground basically so it must be quite a big tunnel and tunnel system underneath there that that warthog was able to now when we eventually found him we actually found him walking towards us on the fire break slightly west he had an injury just on the inside of his arm and then also on the side of his neck just a little gash and i think it was because of those razor sharp uh, tusks that of course warthogs have if any of you have ever had the opportunity to feel warthog tusks the bottom ones are exceptionally sharp like steak knives so very easy just a a quick throw of the head would be enough to slip straight through a leopard's thin skin. They haven't got tough skin like rhinos and buffalo and elephants have. Much thinner, so easier to get hurt. So that's quite interesting. And he gave up. He eventually he moved off. He didn't go in for a second time. He learned his lesson. He thought, this is obviously too big for me and very feisty. I'm an old man. I need to look after myself. And we followed him and he was still looking for something to eat and he came down in this direction. Just a little bit further from where we are now. We're at the uh, one of the old hyena den sites as well, just off in Vubu Road. And he was looking further west, so towards that drainage line. Now, I haven't seen anything just yet, and it doesn't look like there's anything here, but he could be resting up, although he's rested for most of the evening, and like I said, he does like to move around and hunt during the day. So I've driven shortcut Gallego, then got distracted by hyenas, though that's not a bad distraction. They're, like, they're one of my favorite animals, so I was very happy. Not quite my top favorite, elephants are, but they're close second. So that was really nice to see as well. So we're going to keep searching. We'll do a couple of loops around and just see if we can't bump into him like that. We'll check a few drainage systems, but I don't think we're going to be doing too much unnecessary off-roading today. We've had our fair share, enough for the rest of the year. Now, I was just thinking about those hyenas. I think I got quite excited. I'm just trying to figure out who they could be. In. I mean, you all have seen the hyenas a lot more often than I have. Unfortunately, the last time that I saw hyenas, young hyenas like that, must have been oh, a couple of months ago. I only saw them, ever saw them twice at that dental Philemon's cut line. That was right in the beginning of the year. So I think that other one might be slightly older. So Chris Rogue, you said that the fluffy cub was, is Ribbon's cub and Tima. Okay, that's quite interesting. So how old would they be now? Maybe closer to six months, five months old now, probably somewhere around there. So that's a little bit sad um, that both of them didn't make it. But again, it's also not uncommon with all predators that often only one sibling will survive. Um, and then if there were two females, I don't know if there was ever a conclusion as to what the sex of those young cubs uh, were. It's difficult to tell at that age. It's difficult to tell the sexes between adult hyenas. You do have to spend quite a bit of time with them. And we all make mistakes often with misidentifying hyenas. But I promise you, don't worry, no one is going to hold it against you. So if they were where sisters too might have found uh, that the older one, the more dominant one, could have also uh, killed off the 
younger sibling. That happens quite often with hyenas. Uh, definitely huge competition, but very exciting nonetheless. Now we need to try and figure out who is this new tiny little cub. It's not old, it's really, really small. And even in, in, if this isn't Tima, um, it doesn't look particularly big, very fluffy, but quite, quite small. And I remember down when I was working down in the south, we had an active hyena then, there were so many little ones. And, and I've seen lots of hyena cubs that were almost six months and older, and they're normally a little bit taller than what, she's, well, than what that one was. So I didn't get a good enough look. I wasn't concentrating to see if it was a male or female. I was too excited by the whole sight because I, keep, I kept dreaming that one day we were going to come around the corner and we were going to see those hyenas sitting there. And as soon as we saw those ears, you should have asked Megan just before we went live on the pre-show. I was going, the hyenas are here! The hyenas are here! And then, whoo! you know came the roar of applause finally from uh, final control because we've been waiting for such a long time but let's take a little turn down here I don't know if Lex is out with his guests just yet so we'll just have to sneak and and just make sure if I see any movement around the rooms we'll turn around ah zebra some more zebra lots of zebra actually let me go mm. just trying to find a gap for you because they're hiding behind the bushes we could maybe do this one here Yes, we'll do this one. So there are four zebra here, just off of, of what is this road? Gallego Shortcut Shortcut, the one that goes to the pan. I don't think they're the same ones that Ali had because we're right now on the northern corner. We're probably about 400 meters or so from Vuyatela Dam, so I think we're a bit too far away. And if I'm not mistaken, Megan, her zebra, we're walking up towards quarantine. So a different herd, not necessarily from the same herd. And let's see who we've got here. But a nice group. I'm happy that all the animals are just slowly starting to come back here. Now that the zebra are coming back, the wildebeest slowly making their return. Hopefully, we'll get the buffalo. They're next on the list. And I think whoever finds the first big herd of buffalo on the property is going to be a hero. Ali, the race is on, my friend. <laughs> a bit of friendly competition. I bet we're all going to be sitting at Sydney's Dam waiting for them to come down and drink. Um, because that's where they typically like to go, especially the ones that are in the Manuleti. They utilize that dam on the most northern corner of the Sabi Sands. But a very unpleasant afternoon. Warm, but windy, which is not, not great. Alice says game on. Ah, oh, Alice, fantastic. I love it that she's always keen for a little bit of fun and a little bit of competition, which is nice. Ah, I can still hear, I think I can still hear guests in camp. Although I don't recall seeing any children on Lex's vehicle. So maybe, actually maybe it could be um, all the kids at the Staff Village. It is school holidays at the moment. That's something I'm actually quite sad about. I'm missing the school drives. But of course I'm sure the kids are having loads and loads of fun on their break. But I, I do look forward to the return of the school drives again. So if any of the children are watching on their holidays... Please send me lots of questions. Remember, you can hashtag Safari Live. Not, you don't have to just be a children as well. A children, a child. To ask questions, you can be an adult and I'd love to hear from you too. But they're off the zebra goat. Let's keep going. Let's poke our nose down. Keep checking to see if Mvula is going to pop up somewhere. Now, a lovely question from Stephen this afternoon, seeing as though we're having lots of fun with zebra, and that is, if the herd stallion dies, what happens to the mares? The mares will actually just carry on um, without him, and eventually a new stallion will come into play. Maybe there's a, a subordinate stallion also in the herd, maybe a young up-and-coming stallion who knows to bump into a, a new fella along the way. But um, they, they're not 100% reliant on the males. Remember, the males, are, they come and go. As soon as a fitter, stronger contender comes through and can challenge a stallion for his herd, um, he's going to take over anyway and boot the, the uh, loser out. That's something that could be quite interesting. We must keep an eye. Imagine getting a cool stallion fight. That would be amazing. Zija, now this is a touchy subject. You're wondering what happened with my McCurdy Herdy. In case you don't know who the McCurdy Herdy is, it was a group of zebra that I got very familiar with and seemed to enjoy my company on foot. I don't know if this was all just a coincidence. I like to think that it wasn't a coincidence because it was quite fun. We had really amazing 
uh, times with them up close personal encounters on foot and then some of you gave them the, the nickname McCurdy Hurdy my surname is McCurdy so that's where it all came from and conveniently rhymed with herd Hurdy anyways I don't know what's happened to them I'm very sad because one of the juveniles uh, were attacked by a lion and then we think the hyenas and took it down towards the end which was quite sad and and really since then we haven't actually seen them back and we see lots of smaller pockets of zebra but nothing as big as what the McCurdy Hurdy once was right hello Impala I suppose we should say hello to you they're right here at Galago Pan doesn't look like Lex is here actually oh that one's got a whole flock of oxpeckers on its back it didn't seem to enjoy that too much it's actually shaken them off hmm what do we have here no, these are hyena tracks not leopard tracks so just a nice bachelor herd coming down to have a drink I can actually hear the zebras that Ellie had earlier they're all bleating at the moment they've been bleating the whole day so I don't know what's upset them so much or why they sort of seem to be slightly distressed. And these Impala though are having a good old time. Looks like they're going to now chase each other around a bit. This could be quite entertaining. Even though the rat is over, there's still a couple of boys who I think haven't quite realized that. You often see um, these rams challenging each other for dominance even amongst the bachelor herd. And I think that's what's going on over here now. Let me just check and make sure they haven't found any leopards yet. Oh, there we go. They're just talking about on the radio now the sighting that was this morning with Harley with the Mvula versus the Warthog. So I will update Tax on the last spot that I had him. But I haven't seen his tracks come out just yet, so I think he might be in a drainage line somewhere. Somewhere about, yeah. Boys, are you not going to show us how fit and strong you are? Here's a youngster. He's there's two of them that are sort of of similar or well, no lie three of them that look relatively young there's one or two big rams in here Woo! <laughs> got a bit of a spring in their step and this is what impala will actually do they're not doing it properly now but they'll often jump around like this and and display as to how healthy and fit they are often they do this around predators just to show them that you know you actually i'm not worth your time i'm going to outrun you so don't even bother wasting your energy on me but they do sometimes play around like this. Now that they've obviously had their drink, they're going to move off and perhaps continue grazing. Or are you just going to play around the watering hole and they're going to chase each other? Here goes the third one. <laughs> well, they're probably not going to clash heads or clash horns, should I say. I don't think that they're really doing that too much. We actually missed it. We didn't get any good. I didn't see any um, any fights this year. Any serious fights. I saw some youngsters, you know, that were still with their mothers, practicing and pushing and shoving each other around. But other than that, no dust tearing into the sky. There wasn't any strange noises coming around. A bit disappointing. Now, dear watch, you're wondering if the Impala only fight one-on-one. -on -one. Well, it's interesting. Um, typically, when you have you, when you have a contender coming and uh, sorry approaching a, a breeding herd with a ram already at the top position, then it will normally be one-on-one. -on -one. But I have seen sort of like scrappy fighting before. Where you'll have two clashing horns, and you'll have a third one come in, also of similar size, and then they all size each other up and race around and then chase the females back and forth and it can get quite messy so uh, I don't know I don't think that they just fight one on one I think every now and then when there's an opportunity and there is another contender they'll all come in and try and uh, sort of fight for dominance but we didn't really see too much of it I have seen it before but not necessarily here at Wild Earth hello boys okay let's keep going I'm also going to chat to Tax I'm going to just call Tax and, and just update him where I last saw Mvula Tax or Taylor? Okay, right, I'm going to have a chat with Tax and just give him an update on where we last had him. Vula, I'm going to send you across to Ali, who has moved on from a zebra. Tax, sorry, I went out. Well, we have moved away from the zebra, just trying to find perhaps elephant or buffalo this afternoon. 
My secret wish is that when we go to Chitu a Dam, that a very big herd of elephants is going to be there. That would be fantastic. Right, in the meantime, we are checking the smaller dams all around um, Juma just to make sure that we don't leave any opportunities out. Perhaps maybe there will be a buffalo treehouse dam, which is roughly where we're headed now. And then we'll come and check twin dams, see if there are more zebras, any hippos, or any birds. It seems like the wind has calmed down a little bit and it's starting to, to be a little bit better. Alrighty guys, time to reveal yourselves to us. We are waiting. Start flying around. And I think the little bird, by the way, that we were looking at this morning, that had me a bit confused there for a second. I had a more of a calm look on the bird book once we we got back to the lodge because it looked strangely familiar. And I think it was perhaps the female of the pinto wider that occurs in this area. Now the pinto waders, the male, have got very long beautiful tails and the females are pretty much like the one we saw here. So I don't remember, I don't know, I don't know if you remember the tiny little bird with a red beak and then almost like the scaly brown feathers. So I think that's what it was. Because um, sometimes birds, they can be quite tricky to identify but I think maybe we can tick that one off the list as well this morning. Now I am hoping that if we go to that same branch or that same fallen off Nubthorn, maybe we'll see some some more around uh, around the dam. Oh, this is a very hmm. no. I'm not going down the drainage line. I think we have had lots of off-roading for one day, <laughs> didn't we, Seb? We went through some very interesting patches today. Sarah, you're saying that maybe we can see elephants today. Well, they are definitely on the list. I am looking for them since we started driving. However, it seems like not too many signs of them around here. But the day or the afternoon is still young, so we're going to carry on looking for them. I think a very nice big herd of elephants would be wonderful for this afternoon. And if we get the cherry on top, I would like them to be close to a dam so that we can see them all playing or the little ones splashing the water and just being happy elephants. I think that would be my prize for this afternoon and I think very likely that's why we're gonna head to Chitu Dam in the hopes that we'll also get to see some of them around there. I haven't seen elephants at Chitu Dam yet. Funny enough I think I've only seen elephants in at Twin Dams which is a sighting we had the other day and at Gauri Dam. I've never seen elephants at Buffalzook Dam or have I? No yeah I have seen elephants at Treehouse Dam. Now I'm lying I'm being all dramatic for nothing. <laughs> Alright, got that one wrong, but I'm still gonna carry on hoping for elephants on Chitwa Dam. Now, Shongile, this would be a good area for you to be in as well. I wonder where she's been. We haven't had any tracks for her in the last few days. And also not for Hosanna, so I wonder if perhaps they're in between Hoffman's and Little Gowry. It seems like when they're not here, that's where they like going to. Alright, we are slowly approaching the dam. Perhaps there will be some new birds there for us to see. Oh look, there's another termite mound there with a big burrow. I'm sure maybe <laughs> one day we'll see him Mbula on top of there. Perhaps he's, he already knows that there was one there and that that wasn't the right one to go into. I still cannot believe he's patient of how long he stayed there just waiting for this warthog to come out. I think it just takes you to a whole new level of understanding just how patient the leopards have got to be to be able to make a kill. I don't, I don't know if I would have that patient as a leopard. I would probably starve because I would ruin all my hunts for being so impatient. All right. We are on the dam wall. Oh, and there's a hippo! Yay! Scuba Steve! Who has, funny enough, gone down underneath the water. Alright, let's see if perhaps if we stick around long enough here, see if it'll come back up. 
Now, I don't know if you saw where the ripples in the water were, roughly to the middle, and that's where his head went down. I think maybe this is quite a shy little hippo that doesn't like to be seen by humans too much. As I've only seen him twice in this dam, and every time that I had, he seems to spend his 10 minutes of breathing air underneath the water. Hmm. It's looking quite pretty around the dam today. Let's see as well if we can spot any new birds. Jamie, you're wondering if we ever got stranded in the bush, if we could drink this water. Uh, hmm, I don't think that would be the best idea. The water is becoming quite stale at the moment and I'm sure there are lots of algae floating around there. Perhaps I would recommend doing an, a good old elephant style adventure of trying to dig in an old drainage line. Ah, we know you are there. Scuba Steve, just putting his nostrils up, getting some air. But um, you can always try and filter this water, which then I would recommend. I mean, if you were dire and in desperate need of water, I'm sure this would be an oasis and it would be the best thing that you had ever seen. But I can add, if you had socks, for example, and some sand, I would try to filtering the water through them before you started drinking it, just because I'm sure there are all sorts of parasites that live in the water that might make us quite sick. So, rather not. Oh. I think there are oxpeckers there, so just to the right, going down for water. Are you oxpeckers? You sounded like oxpeckers. Yay! It's the oxpeckers! Um, yeah, to the left, you've got them there, in the middle. There we go. Quite a bunch of them. Seems like we've got about five of them in total. Yeah, there's a bit of glare in the water that's making it a bit difficult for us to see in that direction, but lucky enough, oxpeckers have a very characteristic call and they just go like Brrr, and it's easy to, to know then know that they've come around. I was hoping that they would have been attached to a much bigger creature like a buffalo, but I'm not complaining because we haven't seen them in a while. And it's good to see you guys down here. Well, somebody's hungry. You see, these areas are also good for the expectors to come and start looking for food because often we will have the bigger creatures that will come down like the elephants and um, the buffalo and perhaps even uh, some of the antelope like the impala or the kudu. And as they start coming down into the water and where it becomes a bit muddy, if they put their paws in there, then the ticks might just somewhat dislodge themselves or get trapped in the actual mud. And then when they come down, they can feed off of them if they find them um, around the shores of the dam, which is pretty much easier for them. Imagine coming down for a drink and then just being able to have a bit of extra food. Not too bad, hey? Now, there were other little birds flying around, but I think everyone's just pretty much moved off. So I want to take another quick scan, see if perhaps we can find a new one, take something else off of our list today. I hope the oxpecker was a new one for someone. Maybe a yellow-billed oxpecker one day. Hopefully one day. No, it seems like it's quite quiet here in terms of bird population and even in our very good and trustworthy northern that we were looking at this morning, also no birds around that general area. Hmm. So, I think it's time for us to leave Treehouse Dime and carry on. Because also Scuba Steve, I think it's becoming a bit stressed with our presence. He, it's funny because every now and again we will just see these two nostrils going up. He'll grab a bit of air and then he'll go down, pretending that he's not around here. So I think, I don't know who came up with the name Scuba Steve, but I think it's a very good name. We're going to carry on to Twin Dams, but while I do that, let's go over to Taylor and see what's happening if she's had had any luck with Mbula. Nothing just yet, I'm afraid. I'm now trying to think like Mvula and try and figure out where on earth he would go. So we've been just been driving quite slowly up Voyatella Access. We're almost at uh, the gate now, Gauri Gate. And like I said, no tracks crossing over here. We did find the pathway though that the lions used this morning. 
Uh, they crossed just on the other side of Gallego shortcut across Vuitella, then went straight to the power lines road and I presume they crossed out on Triple M somewhere around that side. So I think what we're going to do now is because Mvula has been spending so much time, time over the last few weeks around Sydney's Dam and in the Manuleti, he could be doing one of two things. He could be going straight west towards Simbambili, which he likes as well, and the most western corner of Arethusa, or he could be going back north and heading to his old favorite spot. So I think let's go check Sydney's Dam first. We'll just drive through here. We'll be sneaky. Quickly have a look and see if he's not around here and then if he isn't here I might just quickly weave in and out of some of these roads perhaps go down Sandy Patch and then go and check on Impala Plains I think that's going to be our plan for now but maybe we do see him somewhere but I'm just scanning making sure I don't well trying my absolute best not to miss anything Whee! Let's have a look. Hmm. It's hard trying to track. It's not the easiest thing. Especially when you haven't got any footprints to follow. And it's even difficult to follow footprints, trust me. And now you've just got to try and think of their favorite routes because they will use the same pathways on a regular basis. Check that damn wall. We'll go up a little bit further and then look back again. But again, nothing, no track so far. We're still out and dry on Leopard Spur. Another thing I'd like to do is I want to join Abby and do a bit more birding, see which other little feathered friends we can find and possibly some elephants. We might have to go to the Mulwati and see if we can find some elephants. Let's just, let's have a little scan here. And I know we've I've parked us and it's very uneven this road, but we're here right on the most northern corner of the Sabi Sand. We're looking in to Buffalo's Hook, and then on the other side of that big dam is the Manuleti, which is another wilderness area. But it doesn't look like there's anything there, anything leopard shaped that I can see. But just checking that dam wall very carefully, looking in the long grass. There's no impala around here at all, no wildebeest. There's actually normally always a herd of impala here. But nothing. Okay, let's keep going then. Not even any birds for us. Fish eagles aren't even around. Right, so I think we'll do sandy patch then and then go and check around impala plains. Saxon's also looking in the area, so he might check up and down a couple of the roads. He's going to do what he did yesterday. He'll be on the move now. Right, so let's go here. Always a bit bumpy. Let's check there. Chatting on the radio. It's Ellie that's talking on the radio. Uh, lots of hyena tracks everywhere. But we know why! Which is exciting. Maybe we'll go back We'll try to go back in the next half an hour or so and go and check that den again, see if anybody's home. If any adults are home, should I say, because we know the little ones are there. Right, no impala here either, but I wouldn't want to be an impala, or if I was an impala, I wouldn't stand around here. It's very windy out in these open patches. So impala plains actually might be a good bet because of all the quarry trees that are around there. It becomes quite sheltered. And I suspect we'll find things like warthogs, impala, kudu, maybe some more wildebeest and zebra. And then we'll try and do a bit of birding around there. Those, those quarry trees are proving to be quite popular at the moment for the smaller birds. They're waiting for the berries to ripen. And also because, like I said, lots of leaves means you can keep out of the wind. I don't think we'll see too many birds flying today. And the ones that do fly well, they're going to have a challenge. Ah, right. So Ali's also got birds on the brain. Should we have a competition, Ali? I know you already started. I'm a bit behind, but I'm all about catching up. Let's go across to her and see how many she's got on her list. Funny enough, 
have I done? No, I know Taylor has counted how many birds she's managed to tick off her bird book and I started yesterday and then I forgot about it and I lost track again. So <laughs> maybe I'm gonna have to try again and start over. Um, so far, not too many birds on this road. Seems like after we left Tria's Dam, some of the creatures decided not to accompany us and we haven't spotted any, any more birds or not even elephants. So we're gonna head over to Twin Dam, see if perhaps there are any either feathered friends or big rocky looking like friends um, for us to spend the afternoon with. I wonder, that, that herd that we bumped into yesterday, that would spend some time yesterday afternoon before we headed off to Tingana, was quite a big herd and I think in total there were around maybe 60 of them. So I wonder where they've gone. I would really much like to see them again. So maybe they came all the way from the Kruger. Could be. We are not too far from the Kruger boundary and animals can move freely in between the Kruger and the Savvy Sad. So could be. It is dry. Water sources are starting to become less available for all the animals so I wouldn't be surprised. Now, what is this now? This is just a stick on the road. <laughs> I think maybe this road was not the road to be on today. Very quiet around here. Alright. Mm. I'm also looking for any insects or any interesting trees that might be new to us around this particular area. I think we have pretty much covered the most common ones. Rashni, you're saying we managed to add two more birds to your list this morning. Yes! Super excited to be able to tick up birds. That is a great feeling where you're like, ha, got this one! Which is very cool. Now I'm hoping maybe as we get onto Chito Dam that we'll see some more flying and fluttering around there. I think that would be a very good area to do some birding. Hopefully we'll be able to, to get some to get some more over there. And well Twin Dams is not far, so who knows? Maybe we will have a very rare bird sighting over there. Narina Trogon would be nice. And Narina Trogon is a very small, very bright colored well not that small, it's actually bigger than a sparrow. But it's a very bright colored bird with a very beautiful red chest and a bright green head. And it's very hard to see. It normally likes to live in areas that are very thick, so they're not the most common of birds out here. Ah, oh, hello squirrel. No. Oh, what's happening? Naughty squirrel. So we've got a squirrel up here. And I think the squirrel was actually eating some of the sap of the tree seems like this branch that has been pulled uh, pulled down uh, it's well it's clearly broken but there's a lot of red that perhaps it's not coming through all that clearly because of the position of the Sun oh no I think I might have scared it away oh, it's on the top now yeah there we go <laughs> tiny little one and I think that's what it was doing it still looks like somewhat of a youngster doesn't look like a fully grown squirrel to me but I wonder what you're up to. Alright, I can hear some birds around us, so I wonder where they are. Interesting. Alright, we are looking for all of you little things, squirrel. If you see a bird, please point it in our direction. Ah, there we go, and it's one of my favorite ones. I'm gonna try to move, see if we can see it. Tesla, you're seven and you'd like to see some ground hornbills. That would have been amazing to see them and we actually drove down the road where we saw them. Oh, I got a fly into my eye. Where we saw them this morning. No, it's gone away. Um, but they were not around. So who knows, maybe they've moved around them. Like, we'll look for them. And I think now that they're making those beautiful calls, we absolutely loved it. Seems like Taylor is joining me on some birding today, so let's go over to her and see if she's got any new ones for us.
Well, we've got a puppet of some sort now. I'm trying to figure out exactly which puppet it is. It's got very white supercilium, but it's also... Oh, you did not just fly away like that. Whew. Okay, I thought I was going to give it a, have to give it a stern talking to. And it's sort of got buffy flanks as well. Um, I think it might actually be a buffy puppet, to be honest. It's, it's, it hasn't got a lot of streaking on its chest. Urgh, it's a tough one. Between a playing back puppet and a buffy puppet. Are there any birding fundies on Game Drive this afternoon that perhaps can give me a, a little hand? Because I don't want to misidentify this bird. So I think it's either a playing backed puppet or a buffy puppet. It's one of them. They've both got a very white supercilium. And they can also have, well, the playing back puppet pick, pick can have a little bit of streaking on the chest too, but not very much. So I'm not sure. Let me just open playing backed puppet. I just want to have a better look at what one looks like. Uh, some examples. It's a hard one. Ah, okay, so thank you so much. I believe you are all thinking now. It will greatly be appreciated. I think I'm actually going to go with a playing backed puppet. It doesn't look like an African puppet to me because it's quite sort of, um, it's more of a rufous color underneath its, oh, maybe it is. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm overthinking this and it is actually just has it got a, yes it is I've changed my mind it's the African puppet I overthought it hmm Bundy Birdie you have said uh, a Buffy puppet uh, maybe now I've actually changed my mind to the African puppet and the reason why I'm going to go with African puppet is because as it turned around now and I had a nice look at its face you can see it hasn't just got the white supercilium so that sort of eyebrow stripe um, above its eye, but there's almost like a throat stripe. You see the white going from its beak and just down past its eye as well. And that's very typical of an African puppet. And it also just looks like it has a bit too much mottling on for my liking to be the others. So these things are hard. These smaller birds, you really have to look carefully. And the puppets and the larks, oh my goodness, I cannot tell you how they all look the same. But it is definitely a puppet. This behavior running through the grass is so typical. And when it flies, and I have seen it, we have watched it fly now, you missed it. Um, and they don't fly very high, just sort of fly straight up out the grass. Uh, soar quite low and then land back in it again. That's such typical behavior where uh, larks actually often like to perch on small shrubs. Or if you're a monotonous lark, you like to perch right on the tops of the trees. But the other larks don't tend to always do that. So I think I'm going to go with African puppet there. It might be a new one. If you do disagree, I'd love to know and why you think it isn't. I've got a bit of a glare on my screen, so it would be nice if you can take a couple of screenshots and we can compare. And... But just from the picture that I looked at now, I quickly pulled up one of an African puppet in this area. And it looks very, very similar uh, to this with the dark markings right on the edge of the wings as well. And then that white underneath the throat. Okay. Do you watch? You've said that this is a new one for your list. Well, congratulations. That's great. I hope I'm correct. Like I say, I'm, I'm quite happy to stand under correction here. It's a hard one. It's not being chased away by a virtual starling. So there's another bird for you here. We've got a little food party. It's not anything particularly gl glamorous in terms of having uh, lots of very nice fancy birds. Like we had the other morning, we had chugras and brew brews and, and buntings and all these things. We've got a few common birds, yeah. But it's a, a good way to start off your list. So if you can help Ali and I keep score today as we put some birds on screen, we'll see how many can we can have a look at. Now it's funny because I've been looking for these puppets for ages now. What else do we have? I think we also have some crowned lapwings. I'm so sorry, Gert. Let's quickly show them so we can get another one on our list. And then we've, got, we've done three birds here and we'll continue. So the crowned lapwings are absolutely no stranger to this area at all. They love it out here in the short open grass. We see them not just here at Impala Plains or the beginning of Impala Plains. We see them all over quarantine, around near the dams. And for once, they're not making a huge racket either. They're quite noisy birds. They seem to be just going about looking for little insects to eat. So there we go. So we've got three different birds here. I can't see anything more just yet. But let's keep moving on. Let's see what else we can find. Woo! Hello, 
Tesla, my young friend, you've said that the that Pippet is number 92 on your list. Congratulations. We're going to have to try and get you to 100 today, young lady. I think that's going to be my challenge this afternoon. Or well, between Ali and I, hopefully we'll be able to get you to 100. Now you're wondering why they're called Pippets. I don't know, but I might have a book here that might be able to tell me. I don't have my really big bird book that uh, gives you a list of where all the names come from. Hang on, maybe Tesla, maybe you can actually help me out this afternoon. Maybe you can be my little, uh, my little sidekick. So maybe you can look on the internet, you can ask your mom to help you. If you can search, where does the name Pippet come from? And maybe they'll give you a little bit of an explanation. I think my, the bird book that I've got here won't really go into the depths of where the names come from. Um, I think it just talks more about behavior and things like that. So. So maybe you can help me test that and then you can let me know hashtag Safari Live. Or if anybody else wants to help Tesla out, you can do the same thing and you'll be helping me out of course and I'm most appreciative when you assist me with um, all of the information. So another exciting thing, we're not just going to be looking for birds around here, I'm also still keeping an eye out for Mvula of course. Uh, but we won't focus our entire drive on just trying to find him. We'll look at some other things in between. Is there were a pair of jackals, side-striped jackals that Sebastian and I very briefly, uh, briefly saw the other morning. So we'll keep an eye out for them. Maybe they're just resting up uh, in the grass today. Very camouflaged, very difficult to spot. If we thought spotting a leopard in uh, this long grass was hard, try taking something that's only about the fifth or maybe even less, maybe the sixth of the size uh, in terms of height of a, of a leopard. That will be tough, but I like a good challenge and I'm willing to give it my best shot. But we've still got a bit of a way to go before we get to that area. Hmm. Izzy, you've asked if I could be a bird for a day, which one would I be? We have to ask Ali this as well, be interesting to hear. Um, I don't know, I'd like to be a sextry bird just because they're my favorite, maybe one of the eagles. But I think a combination would maybe be Maybe imagine being a southern ground hornbill for the day. Don't you think that sounds quite cool? Walking through the grass with your long beak, picking, catching all sorts of things, snakes and rats. I think that could be quite exciting. And then having amazing big wings and being able to fly quite well too. And sing beautiful songs. I think I'm going to go with the southern ground hornbill. I'd like to be one of those for a day. But it's a tough one, you know, that's actually a really difficult question to ask. You're making me work very hard and have to use my brain and think of all these reasons why I'd want to be that bird and not something else. Because who also wouldn't want to be an eagle? Imagine being a martial eagle or a vulture and soaring thousands of kilometers up in the air and being able to see what's going down on, on, on the ground too. So that's another thing to think about. That could be quite exciting as well. So I don't know, but I'll go to Southern Ground Hornbill. That, that's what I'm feeling. Those are the vibes I'm getting. And maybe we'll see some horn, uh, Southern Ground Hornbills. Ellie seems to be the queen. She almost has them on every game drive. What did I just see on the ground? I saw some old footprints. No, they're blown away by the wind. So they can't be particularly fresh, so we won't worry about them then. Right. These are some good spots. This is where all the little birds like to sit about but I can't hear any chirping just yet but we'll go back across to Ellie now and find out what bird she'd like to be well Izzy you're wondering what bird we would like to be I think I would go vulture today that the sky looks so the sky looks so blue just so that I could so I think vulture will be my call but it would be a vulture on a day that they're not really scavenging because I just want to be a vulture so that I can fly very high. So if I can be picky, it would be that. What about you, Sam? What would you be? A battle eagle. A battle eagle? Yeah. Okay. Do you have any particular reason why? Because it's beautiful, beautiful, hmm? beautiful and flying high, yes. I think we all just want to fly. <laughs> Now we've got a birch owl starling over here and a red-billed hornbill, which is funny, we haven't seen any red-billed hornbills for a while. It seems like this one is furiously looking for some food in there. Jumping around, very chicken-like of you. And I, uh, I think you might have even pushed away that starling to get to that spot. What are you eating now? Hmm. 
Hmm. Seems like maybe some seeds. Alright, um, seems like we're going to carry on driving, see if we can find rare birds. But in the meantime, let's go over to Tail and see what other birds she's found. We are looking at something up in this tree. Ah! And I don't know, was it a white brown sparrow weaver? It didn't look particularly big for one. No, I don't think it was a white. It looked like a sparrow. I'm actually just looking on my bird list now. Let me try and have a look at S for sparrow. Well, it wasn't a grey headed sparrow. Can you. Uh, I don't actually know what that was. What have you got here? couldn't see a yellow throat. Do you think it could have been a yellow-throated Petronia? It looked a little bit like this. Actually, let me turn it this way. Sorry, then you can see. Don't you think it looked quite similar to something like that? I didn't see the yellow throat though, so it was a bit confusing. Actually, actually looks exactly what it looked like. But if you can, again, give me a help because we are doing the LBJs today and they are the most difficult to try and identify. What do you think, Megan? Did you have a good look at the other one? I didn't get a long enough look. But it had a very white eyebrow. Now, white-browed sparrow weaver is slightly larger than that. And that white eyebrow and their markings are just a whole lot more striking. That one looks like it had been in the wash a few times. It was quite dull in colour. So we do get yellow-throated petronias. They're all, over, all around here. And we often overlook them. So that's what it looked like to me. But you can compare the picture that I just showed you on my phone. Perhaps if you go back or you manage to take a screenshot of that little bird that we had. You can have a look for me in... And, and just see and let me know, that would be great. But I'm, I'm actually not entirely sure what we were looking at. But maybe it was that. Okay. Izzy and Guy, you've said that they look the same, very similar. Should we just go with yellow-throated Petronia? We'll have to try and... Actually, we can play the call because I heard it calling. How silly of me. Oh, I'm not thinking today, am I? Right. Let's play the call then. Let's turn this on. Have a little listen. I have to go back to press back though. Let's see what the next variation is. It's similar to that. Let's see what this... It's hard to say. It was singing when it was up on top. Not for very long though. But it wasn't as chirpy of a call as this one seems to be. But it might just be because of a different area and that's all they've got. I think in, in terms of what it looked like, it looked very much like a yellow-throated Petronia. But it was hard because I didn't get that confirmation on the little, little yellow throat that you can sometimes see. Okay, well, let's see what else we've got here. Impala, oh, we've got to get ox peckers all... Does it count? Can we can we already see or not see? Can we already add the ox peckers, the red-billed ox peckers that we saw earlier? Hey Megan, does it count the ones we saw on the impala at Galago Pan? Hey, leave those girls alone. Don't bother them. Okay. The Megan says it counts and she's directing the show today, so what she says goes. So that we've also got red-billed ox peckers on our list too, and I think that's all the birds really. Here's a nice herd of impala. Like I said, this is where a lot of the animals I think are going to hang around today because it's so sheltered, and here are the impala. No warthogs just yet, and I'm wondering what we're going to see as we head around the next corner because then the plains open up again. But I'll just let these impala cross the road very quickly. Well, some of them might run across the road and not just walk very dainty like they seem to be doing now. Yeah, we don't just have to always give the big animals right away. We can also give the smaller ones a chance too. But I haven't seen those jackal yet. I don't know where they are. Brayden, who is six years old. I hope you are having a very good holiday if you are in school already and you're enjoying the school holidays and you're you were only six years old you were wondering what do impala like to eat impala are really amazing antelope they have to be africa's most successful antelope we get them all over uh, the continent and they're able to eat lots and lots of different things Braden. so now we can see them they've got their heads down and they're eating grass but they also eat the leaves and 
I've seen them nibbling on fruit every now and then too. But grass is probably their favorite. But because the grass is going to start disappearing now, they're able to change what they eat. And that's what's so special about impala, is that they're not just restricted to eating one type of food. So some animals, for instance, buffalo, Buffalo mainly eat grass, but in the winter months they also browse a little bit. Only about 5% of their diet is, is leaves. Zebra do the same thing. They're predominantly grazers, but when the times are harsh, they can eat leaves too. But impala can eat grass and leaves whenever they want, and they can eat as much as they like. Now, I don't know if I heard correctly. Let's very quickly go across to Ellie, because I think she's got a very special bird. We are so excited, we've got a pearl spotted owlet. Hello. Oh, now, the birds in this particular nap room were making a racket, so we quickly got our binos out and started looking around just to see what birds there were. And imagine our surprise when we found this little one hanging out there. Ah, oh, it's so pretty. <laughs> now, there are two species of owlets that are well, there are this more that we get in this area. This is one of them, the pearl spotted owlet, and we know it's a pearl spotted because it's got the two fake eyes at the back. And there's another one very similar to this one that's called the barred owlet, and it doesn't have those two fake eyes at the back of its head, but it's got pretty much to try and confuse any potential predators. Now, this owl is a bit of a special owl because they are also active during the day and not only during the night. And look at that, look at that camouflage. It took us quite a while to try and get it with the camera because we could see it with our eyes or with the binoculars but then to try and zoom in and find it was a bit tricky. But good thing that now it's there. Lorena, you're saying it looks so tiny. It is a very tiny owl and that's an adult so they don't grow more than that. I would say maybe it's about 10 centimeters, 8 centimeters tall. It's a very, very small little owlet. Hello, you're so pretty. We're so happy to have found you. Now, all of the little birds around, a lot of waxbills, blue waxbills were flying there, just not too happy with the presence of the owl, because the owl is a potential predator. So they were trying to make a lot of noise, see if perhaps I was going to get them away, or get it away, but no, the owl is very set where it is. Lorena, you're saying you love their call. I love it too. It's a very beautiful call that goes <whistles> Yeah, I don't think I'm, I would be a great owl, but it did sort of look in this direction for a second So you see there's a fake eyes at the back just protecting the owl from any potential predators and think that they might can sneak up on it and just come from behind but thanks to those little owls they're able to owls not owls eyes they're able to confuse it all right Dear watcher, you're wondering what this owl eats. Well, it can predate on tricks for other small birds, on small birds, little rodents that live around uh, this area. Pretty much the same thing as a, any normal owl, but just on a much smaller scale, because <laughs> it is a smaller little owlet. I think this owl has won the battle, because the rest of the... Um, wax bills and there was also a green wing petilia around here but unfortunately we didn't manage to get that one uh, on the camera and that would have also been a nice one for the list but we got an outlet during the day I love them very beautiful and again look at that amazing camouflage and just how hard it is to actually be able to spot them had it not been for all the birds helping us out and letting us know that there was something around there, I don't think we would have found it. Izzy, yes, they can uh, pretty much do a 360 degree, or 360, yeah. No, not 360, 180 <laughs> turn on their heads. So pretty much they're able to do that. And the way that they are able to do that is because they've got very flexible muscles, very strong muscles around, but also 
they've got a special adaptation so the main blood system that carries the blood to the head instead of having just one like what we do that would go into the central they've got two one on each side of the head so there's oh they can ensure that even when they twist their head there's constant flow to of blood to the to the head so we'll have two here so if it turns this one this one will carry on pumping the blood and if it turns this way this one will have it seems like Taylor has managed to find another bird so let's go over to her and see what she's got quickly 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 it's a scimitable one that we don't actually get to see very often well, they're around they're definitely here all the time but they're so difficult to spot and to put on camera if you thought finding green wood hoopers which are gregarious and lives in, live in groups so normally there's more than one of them and they look ex almost exactly the same as the scimitable try finding one and keeping it on screen Gert, you're doing the most amazing job because it's not an easy bird, um, it, like I said, to keep on screen. But very cool though, don't you think? Amazing. Now, it doesn't look like much because it is in the shadows, but it's actually a beautiful blue color. Quite similar to the colors that you see on starlings. But it doesn't quite have that sort of green magenta sheen. Not green and magenta. Those are two completely different colors. What is wrong with me today? Goodness gracious. I think I need to go back home and press the reset button anyways you, <laughs> you all know what i'm talking about but it looks like it is very hungry it's looking for something to eat now it's using that long bill and sticking it into the little holes i'm sure there'll be ants and termites and things that it'll be going after and they've got amazing beaks uh, the scimitables they really are lovely birds and i'm glad we've got to see one i haven't actually seen one in a very 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 long time they're not a particularly big bird. Only them and the wood hoopoos are about the length of your ruler, maybe just slightly uh, less than that. They're quite nimble, the way that it's moving so quickly, well, so quickly with its head and its beak, looking for things to eat. It's amazing, their agility. Now, Dina, you've said that they've got really nice tail feathers. They do, and I think those tail feathers will be helping quite a bit in the balancing of that bird. But it'll be looking, oh, it's just, oh, there we go. We've still got it. So, still around, and, and of course, just probing, like I said, looking for different types of insects. I'll even eat spiders and caterpillars, though there's not many caterpillars around at the moment. So, I think it'll be feeding on things like ants and egg and eggs, anything else it can find that's living in those crevices. Maybe even wood borer beetles and their larvae got a long bill there's only a few species of birds that are able to probe that far into the crevices of trees which is quite nice and just as of course the green wood hoopoos do they also use nests and holes and and speaking of birds that use tree holes or natural cavities as their nest oh there we go got something it did have a little little treat on the end of its beak we are going to go down into the mulwati because i'm determined to find you black collared barbets this afternoon i've tried a couple of drives and i failed miserably but we're definitely going to get you a few more it's still there this is incredible this is the longest symmetrical sighting i think i've ever had in my entire life when I mean, i've watched one probe around before on a uh burby pecking around near the bark but it was very quick. Well, I actually thought it was long sighting, but now that we're sitting with this one, this is even better. You know what I think it's doing? It, it's on the silver cluster leaf, and it seems to be targeting the galls, or the galls, the galls. What's, I don't know what's wrong with my English today. Those sort of swollen parts on the uh, silver cluster leaf, and it's obviously trying to get any of the, the wasp larvae that's perhaps inside there. It's just hopped onto the next tree. It's now sitting on a marula that is bare. Also, still looking for lots and lots of insects. That is very impressive. Again, outstanding camera work. I don't think I would have been able to have followed this bird. I keep losing it with my eyes, so I don't know. <laughs> I keep finding it. It's amazing. It definitely helps when you're, I think, a, a wildlife cameraman to enjoy all the wildlife out here. And birds are a particularly difficult thing to go after. It looks like it's winning there. It looks like it's spending quite a bit of time in the same spot. And again, I thought I saw something white on the tip of its beak. So maybe there's some eggs from something there. Little insect eggs. Very interesting though. 
We've had some great bird sightings. Remember that magpie shrike sighting we had with the grasshopper? That was loads of fun as well. I quite enjoyed that. Now, as you look at that scimitar bull, I'm going to start scanning in the next trees to see who our next contender is going to be, who wants to show itself. There were lots of drongos and things moving around here, but now they seem to have flown off. Lorena, you say that this is a new bird and it's number 130. You get a round of applause to me. That's fantastic. Tesla, I have a suspicion that this is also a new bird for you. I don't think you've seen a scimitable yet. So you must let me know. So you could be on number 93 now. Um, what else have we got here? Let's have a look. There's something. Are you, who are you? Woodpeckers. Which woodpecker? I'm going to go forward slightly. Hang on, we've got to do this. Can we see the little batis just over here? I think it is. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, somewhere there. No, the small shrub over here. It's just hopping over there and there. Yeah. There's a little chin spot batis. It's just flying. You can see it. There it is. Zoom straight in the middle. It's bouncing about. So there's another one that we can add to this. We actually saw a couple of these the other day. We had a nice sighting of them too. And this one's slightly more difficult because it's bouncing about in the leaves. I've lost it now. Is it still there? No, I think it has hopped away. Very small little bird too. Um, there was a woodpecker. Oh, I see where that battis is gone, but that's okay. Let me just check up on this marula. Oh, there's a, there's a chagra. Oh, you've got it. Okay, battis. It's bouncing about. I'm going to get, try and get you some chagras. There's a, there's a looks like a black crown chagra that was just over here. Oh my. See this silver cluster leaf? Just behind it to the right, there's a southern black tit bouncing in that tree just directly to the right of it. You can see it's just flown down now. Uh, I think it's a little canary. Is it a little canary? Here we go. So this is not the southern black tit. This is one of the canaries that we've got sitting there very quickly. It's a, it is another food party moving through. I'm trying to see if that tit's still there. Yes, it is. You see it bouncing on those a little bit lower down and to the right. There it is. There's a southern black tit for you. Beautiful bird. Very easy to tell the difference. Um, well, they move quite quickly, so they don't like to sit still. I think if I was a bird, I'd probably be a southern black tit. And then the white paneling on the wings, you can see that streak going down the side of their wing. It's very prominent. There it is. It's just back again. If you go straight in, it was just sitting off to the left. Uh, go up and to the left slightly. A little bit more. So it's just there. Uh, there it is. Go down and to the left. We're catching up with it. It's just behind those leaves on that shrub. I don't know if we'll get another view of it now, but we did get a quick view of the southern black tit. They like to bounce around on the bush willows. They're my favorite birds to watch. Them and the brown headed parrots. One more. Who are we going to get next? We can't let Ali get into the lead. She really stepped up the game there with that pearl spotted owlet. That was a sneaky bird. Okay. It seems as though the birds have moved off from here so we'll keep searching let's go across to Chitwood Dam and see the array of bird life that lives there well we're very excited to have found this green-backed heron because I've only seen it a few times around Chitwood Dam and however every time we try to get it on camera it just flies away so hopefully this will be a new one for some of you a uh, very small type of heron and I think it's just patiently waiting perhaps to go and strike something down in the water. It hasn't moved an inch in the time that we've been seeing them. Very typical of herons of standing very very still and then once the opportunity arises and they'll quickly try and strike the water and get to their prey. I'm sure lots of little birds are living and perhaps even feeding around the the branches of the tree that are down in the water i'm sure lots of good hideouts and potential food sources for them in there as well as for the beautiful heron oh very happy to have seen you there we barely missed it because it's standing so still in there that huh, i think we just got lucky because it moved a bit of the head and then that gave its position away to us which we're very happy about of course as we like to see very special birds that we don't see all that often. Now I also had hoped that there perhaps were more birds uh, on top of the tree where 
the heron is. However, it seems like there aren't too many things there. Now let me, I'm just having another look with my binocular. Seems like there's a plover, a three-banded plover that every now and again comes into the shore. And of course, well, there's another one moving around there. I think it's a bit of a tricky one, but it's there. There we go. The three-banded plover. Now you can see three-banded because it's got three bands around its neck. It's almost, to me it always looks like it's got some sort of weird clothing arrangement and a hat. <laughs> but, flown away. Right, and we could hear some bee eaters earlier on um, flying all around, but I'm not too sure where they've gone off to now. I think perhaps somewhere flying around the dam, no? And then, well, of course, if you were wondering, the hippos are here. They have not left lots of hippos around, but I think for once we had decided not to pay too much attention to them. <laughs> And there they are, you see all those very big rocks, unlike Scuba Steve, they're not that shy and they don't mind popping out a bit more of their head all the way back up. So this one's we can see the head and I'm sure they, those ones are pretty used to us driving around and coming here and just having a look at them. It seems like there's been a bit of a disagreement. I think the one to the right, Seb. Yeah, opening its mouth. I think this was more a yawn than an actual display of anything. Normally they will open their mouths like that, especially the males, and you know, toss and turn their head and just show everyone how big their teeth are and just how dominant they can be. But it gets a bit confusing sometimes because they'll also start yawning. <laughs> and I think this was maybe perhaps somewhere in between a yawn and again, of course, a dominance display. I don't think there are any birds on that tree. Not that I can think of, or not that I can see. Birds are being a bit shy around here. Well, of course we have got the very common um, Egyptian geese calling in the distance. Ker Paul, you're wondering if there are any crocodiles. Well, there is quite a big crocodile that we like to call Vlad. That seems the one that we've been seeing the most around this area. We haven't spotted him yet, but maybe we'll keep a lookout and try to see it. Um, because we're not close to any big rivers, we only just mainly have one, perhaps two crocodiles here at a time and in this particular dam because it's the biggest dam that there is around here. Now we've got all the Egyptian geese here. Lots of them, very noisy birds. You can hear them in the distance.